Yes. Between the, these people. So we are organizing into a network of auto tourism here in wow. Brazil. Uh -huh. And I know it's going to be hard work. I've been working in the segment for seven years already. Wherever I go, that's my speech. And mm -hmm. I just want to grow with that and other brothers and sisters getting together to that. And that's an effort that we are doing. There was a, a, a girl in, in the U.S. She launched a green book. Green book, green travel book. I think. Okay. I forgot the name. I need to check on my on my data. So uh, she already put there the list of different places that you can travel to to support smaller businesses that I will see. value those those routes. You know, so what, what there much more. Yeah. So what you're describing is more like, as we would say, it's like uh, traveling, but travel with a more consciously awareness, conscious awareness of exactly. your traveling so you're traveling but you're traveling for certain values that you're you're benefiting the places where you're going you're learning about yourself and your history where you're going and you're also building a network of people that exactly support you into the future and and there's more opportunities in business versus you just going to one place and it's isolated and you're not meeting many people. You're not really interacting as much. Yes. So that's what you're really connection. promoting here. You want to promote that connection. Oh, all about connection. And the benefit is in a longer term. It starts at the moment when you start to plan your trip because you need to research, mm -hmm. you need to understand where to find the, the best guides mm -hmm. that will resonate with what you want and connect with you people who are the real true agents that are promoting that. And then you start to learn a little bit of the history, to hear about yeah. us, how we communicate, and then when you arrive, okay, so this Absolutely. will go deeper when we feel immediately the change. That's how, the way I travel. Yeah, I, I, I go. Yeah, I actually got a little bit lucky only because I had some friends that I met in different places, New York, Miami, and even that were already here in Brazil that I communicated with online. That was the probably the the only thing that helped me understand a better way to travel here than just what's just promoted like fast uh, promotion stuff. And exactly. uh, I, I, I wish fast. I had the, fast pace, please. would have been amazing to have en encountered someone like you or someone who has your knowledge way back. Thank but, you. But hopefully that's what our, our videos here today and our podcast will do for you and for others is to bridge those connections so more people can find out about you and and the people that you work with in your network too so and you me. you come here feel free to connect with me when you come let's get together oh, let's absolutely. hang out do something it would be a amazing beer, a cachaça, <laughs> uh, good coffee learn about our history here as well oh, man. brazilian history always a pleasure always a pleasure and so tell me a little bit about the structure of your business and how that works. Uh, because, well, how about, well, before we get into that, let's go back to the United States, some of the things you learned in school and then how you use that to form your, you know, your actual organization and your structure for your business. Oh, that's a great, a great question. <laughs> it's, a, it's connected with your podcast as well, the one that we were talking about college. Yeah, I heard that. I really like that. Oh yeah, yeah. My uh, episode that I had about that. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Uh huh. And then, well, I think that I chose when I, well, when I was in Brazil and I finished my undergrad, I tried to get a scholarship for uh, my graduate studies in art history, and I wanted to analyze the work of a black artist here called. Eustáquio Neves. He's from Minas Gerais okay. State. And he has a very important work talking about identity, ancestry with photography and, you know, cutting things and making collage. It's amazing. And my work was denied because of racism. Wow. I, I got like the fifth place in uh, my assessment competing with other people for the scholarship. But because the 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 uh, that was institutional racism. No, was it but the subject matter that you were talking about? Because you... it was, especially in 2007, when I finished, uh, people were here more, even more closed in college for themes that would encompass issues of 
gender, uh, race, you know, minorities. And mm-hmm. since my word had that grip, I was, I, I didn't get it. Wow. So how did this impact so, you? Uh, first of all, your own personal feelings. Were you upset, yes. angry, in doubt, worried? How did that bother Big frustration. You? Yeah. Because frustration. I devoured all the books of the, the, the ex- to, for the examinations. I was very well positioned. But destiny will, fate will work on these ways sure. with like not only luck, a lot of work, a lot of ancestors knowing where you need to get. I got a scholarship in the U.S. at the University of Oregon, and I studied, and I, I chose, I wanted to do something related with arts education, but with getting more of managerial skills. Wow, so my yeah, strategy uh-huh. was that since, I'm, since the educational system is, uh, is, how can I say, it's broken. Yeah, that's a good way to, to put find it. All I can create impact through education, and in alternative ways, by learning how to manage business, for example. Because mm-hmm. I'm an educator, first of all. First right. Thing. I see. So, you, so you, I got community arts management, I said. Because there I will learn about management and a little bit about business and to keep the values of community gathering, community organizing. And that was right there. Sounds so I learned a lot of skills. <laughs> Great. Okay. So you learned this. You learned this. And this is a this is a big thing because when I was growing up, the assumption was if you do anything arts and humanities, you're not going to have any success with any kind of business. You're going to be just kind of like lucky if you make it. And then if you do something scientific or business or mathematical, you have to be this rigid person and disciplined, and you're never going to be thinking about this crazy art stuff. So mm-hmm. it's funny to see that in life, you know, as I've gotten older and I've matured, I understand that these things don't have to be separate. You know, there's, there's ways to do it properly where if you're an artist that you're not only doing it for business or if you're business, you don't have to attack uh, creativity and leave people without what they really are destined. Because as an artist or someone who's in that world, your goal is to, to inspire and, and to bring something truthful to the, the forefront. But if somebody's only worried about profit and business, then it, it clashes. So it's good to know that, that that exists, number one, as a path for many people out there who may be struggling right now, know that these paths exist. And then you took that path. And so then what happened after you, so you graduated from Oregon and uh, you, I'm sure you made a lot of friends and networks there. What was your vision yes. after graduating? Well, my vision is it gave me it gave me it gave me I mean sorry it gave me a lot of good tools like this college I'm, I I love to study in any mm-hmm. setting now I, I self study a lot I'm an independent Great. research as I say yeah uh, but one of the main things that taught me is like you need to be brave you need mm-hmm. to have the guts to go on a path of resistance and don't expect a lot of material success right right because don't you expect. that will also keep you on the road of like hunting your instincts ah, of power that's a great word of moto of how can i say the ability of proactivity being proactive being brave, knowing that you'll be able to overcome. So that is like waking out all the time. It will keep you strong. It will keep you young. It will keep you connecting. <laughs> wow. Because so many people, and I've lived this, I, I, I know exactly what you're saying. So there was a, a phrase by Deepak Chopra. He used to say, ageless body, timeless mind right? Yeah. So when I was struggling and I was trying to do my own thing and, and, and doing all sorts of creative things, whether it was writing or fitness or moving on my journey, I did feel like that. I would feel like, man, sometimes, sometimes you get frustrated, like, oh, I'm broke. I don't have any money. I got to do something different. But then you're like, wait a minute, the guy who has all this money, sometimes he's not even happy. He's unhealthy. He's frustrated. He's stressed out. So then I look at myself and I'm like, well, 
I don't have all that other baggage. I just don't have the money. So let me figure out something else and let's work out this money thing. And it became like a dance. And it's, it's, it's really like a, a primal type of feeling. Because there's a, a, a quote that says, if you wake up every morning, uh, the, the lion and the gazelle are both running. I can't remember exactly how it goes. But <laughs> they both right. are running. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. They're both running either way. Either you're uh -huh. running away or you're running after it, you know? So just pick which one you're going to be, I guess. Uh-huh. You have and to all keep moving. Their own, they have their own wisdom. Yes, yes, yes. And they all need to survive and die for the benefit of the ecosystem. Right, right. 